Hello and welcome to another episode of Embrace Your Outdoor Space. Today we've got a seasonal celebration of harvest and Halloween. Halloween, I thought we would, isn't this going to be a spooky episode? Yeah, look, spooky pumpkin. Ooh. Are you going to get dressed up as well? Where's your costume? I'm a, I'm a werewolf. Where's the teeth? Where's the fur? There's, there's no full moon yet. <laughs> Oh yeah, well you get the idea with that. Welcome to a Halloween special of Embrace Your Outdoor Space. If you have followed our journey throughout the course of the year, you will know that we planted our very own pumpkins and now we are starting to harvest them. And actually Halloween has its origins in harvest because it was synonymous with bringing in the last of the goodies, the last of our fruits of our labor and harboring those before the days descend into darkness. So here is a quick history lesson on the origins of Halloween. Press the smoke machine, but don't press it for too long because you remember what happened last time you did. You've done it again, Paul. Halloween, as the legends tell, is a combination of harvest rituals and Celtic folklore where people would gather up fruits and vegetables before the days descended into the darkness of winter. Originally, people would carve turnips to fend off malevolent spirits. One of these spirits was known as Stingy Jack, and over the years, the pumpkin replaced the turnip. And rightly so, because it's a much sexier looking vegetable. In fact, I can't stand turnips, but that's a story for another day. But the legend of the carving made way for the legend of the Jack O'Lantern. And to this day, we carve pumpkins and other gourds in order to celebrate both harvest and Halloween. So with our Halloween history lesson out of the way, how do you go about growing your own pumpkin? These guys grow off of long tentacles that like to spread and they like to be fed. So before you do embark on growing your own, it's worth making sure that you've got enough space in order to grow these goodies. Now ideally you want to start the plant's journey in a pot in a nice sunny warm environments. If you do have scope for some colder weather then a greenhouse or a conservatory is an ideal way to start the plant in a nice successful manner. You want to make sure that plant establishes before you start putting it out into the open soil. So you want to start planting your seeds in May. You want to make sure the ground is nice and warm and fertile. Lots of nutrients because that vine when it gets into the sunshine starts racing off and growing inches per day. Especially on those long summer days you'll see the tentacles spread out and they will grow quick. You want to leave your pumpkin on as long as possible. The only time I would advocate you start cutting the pumpkin is if it is resting on the vine because that vine is what feeds the pumpkin fruit. So as long as your, your pumpkin is not sat on the vine, it's absolutely fine. Don't do what I did. I once grew a huge prize winning pumpkin with my son. He was only three years old at the time. I cut it off too early. I left it out in the rain and the rest is history. And to this day, he's scared not of Halloween, but the memory of that moment where the pumpkin imploded all over his father. So we've sown, we've grown, we've plucked and picked for our Halloween harvest. Now all we need to do is carve our jack-o'-lanterns. That's not the most fun part of it, to be honest. It's hard work, it's messy. If only there was another way, and there is. I'm gonna share my very own Halloween trick and treat so you too can carve the perfect pumpkin and all you need <laughs> is power tools and a spoon and a pen. <laughs> On a serious note, firstly, safety first. If you've never used a cordless drill or a jigsaw before, always familiarize yourself with the instructions. But you are going to need a drill, a jigsaw, an old whisk or a new whisk. Jane doesn't know I'm using that. 
don't let her see that. If she sees that, she's gonna go nuts. Well, that'll probably be the scariest thing I'll witness on Halloween this year. A spoon, again, best dessert spoon, and a pen. You're going to draw your design on what scary face or happy face you want to carve onto your pumpkin. And it's a great way to get kids involved in this. And sadly, my children are currently at school at the moment, but I do have a big kid, so I'm gonna pass this over to Paul. No rub off. No, it's permanent marker. Damn. <laughs> All right. Now, here's a tip. Don't give your kids permanent marker. I thought Paul would be better at this part than he actually is. I suppose drawing that. There's uh, a few things that you could be doing if you aren't picking your pumpkins at this time of year. One of those is watching paint dry. <laughs> that looks pretty decent, actually. Right, good. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's cool. And that's where we see the viewership drop off. <laughs> so with our gloves on, our goggles on, we're good to go. We've got our spoon, we've got our whisk need to create a little bit more working space. Incidentally, if you want to create your own upcycled pallet wood jack-o'-lantern, check out our link for another video and how you can build one of these in five easy steps. So you want to hold down firmly on your pumpkin, make sure it's on a flat surface. And just put a couple of pilot holes around the outside of the top of the pumpkin. Again, on the front face as well, anywhere we're going to cut out, just put a couple of holes in there so we can get our jigsaw into our design. So jigsaw, if you've never used one, you're in control of the power, very easy to operate, but always slow and steady wins the race, especially if you've never used one before. This one in particular has plenty of safety features built in on board. Quick release trigger, so as soon as you take your finger off, you see the blade stops moving. But again, as with everything, you wanna make sure it's on a flat surface and you wanna make sure that you're operating safely and slowly. We're gonna remove our cap and inside you'll come across all this stuff and this really does look quite creepy. Great fun if you're doing this with the kids. Not so fun when you're doing it yourself because you know how much mess you've got to clean up. A litany of these huge seeds. Now you can keep these. There's three ways that you can use all of this. I'm gonna share those at the end of the video. Now, if you're really lazy, I wouldn't say lazy, I'd probably say genius. You can use your drill. You can grab your spoon, insert said spoon into the end of your drill, and put the drill on the slower setting. Speedy scoop. Something inherently enjoyable about doing something like this because resign yourself to the fact that you are gonna get messy, it is gonna be fun, it is gonna be silly, and it's all part of it. It makes scooping it out much easier. So that's when you're gonna grab your big dessert spoon, and then grab a bowl, and you're gonna scoop out all that fleshy stuff. Now you can keep this to animate your pumpkin as well. Some really fun designs, pumpkins regurgitating all their seeds and all their innards. So we've got to carve Paul's masterpiece out. So again, same process as before. Remember, make sure you're working on a flat surface if you can. Now you could use a bread knife to cut these out. Again, very difficult, but we're gonna use our jigsaw. So you're gonna line up with those pilot holes. And there you have it. One quickly carved, creepy creation just in time for Halloween. Obviously, you could do this manually if you wanted to, but this is a quick way, especially if you don't just have one, but you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and no doubt many more in our household, and you want to create your pumpkin quickly and effectively, but still do it with a smile on your face. Apart from this bit. <laughs> now on a serious note, what can we do with all of that goo? Here are three things that you can do with every part of your prize winning pumpkin. Number one, feed on those seeds. Dry them out, mix them into some roasted vegetables for texture and crunch, or you could just rye roast them on their own with a little bit of salt and pepper to give them some extra flavor. Or if you're feeling particularly generous and you want to share the wealth, you could scatter them out amongst the bird feeders to feed your feathered friends. Number two, turn that goo into pumpkin stew or pumpkin soup or pumpkin pie. There are plenty of recipes to cater for all taste buds. And number three, pumpkin jam. Oh, pumpkin jam, pump it up. Wow, the beat is pumpkin and pumpkin from pump. Have you only put that in the top three so you can sing pumpkin jam? I'm offended. No, seriously, it's a real thing. Pumpkin jam, check it out. Right. Oh, pumpkin jam, pump it up. Wow, the beat. Who said Halloween had to be for the kids? Now, whatever you're doing this Halloween, however you celebrate it, I hope you have a horrifyingly good time. And don't forget, if you haven't got any pumpkins growing at home, 
Check out our other link where we'll show you how to build your own upcycled pallet wood pumpkin. If you're having your own horticultural nightmare and you need to improve your range of gardening tools, check out the link at the end of the video to get rid of those garden tools. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs>